Hello, and welcome to the Hotel Investors Marketplace, produced by Hotel Brokers International. I'm Charlie Fritch, president of HBI. The Hotel Investors Marketplace is designed to provide the most current information in franchising, lending, and valuation, as well as provide an opportunity to preview recently listed hotels. While everyone gets signed in and comfortable, we'll highlight a few HBI member listings on the screen, and I'll take care of a few housekeeping items. Hotel Brokers International is the leading hotel sales organization with more than 50 hotel brokerage specialists. Founded in 1959, the organization's broker professionals have successfully negotiated more than 10,000 hotel real estate transactions and annually account for 48% of all mid-market and economy hotel sales in the United States. Visit us, HBI, on the web at www.hbihotels.com. If at any time during this webcast you have a question, please do click on the Ask a Question button found on the gray bar located at the top of the webcast player. Type in your question and submit it. We'll answer as many as our time allows. That's, of course, for everybody listening now while we're live. Uh, if you're listening after it's been recorded, that feature won't be available. Please let us know how we're doing. Rate today's webcast by clicking on Rate, which is found on the gray bar located at the top of the webcast player. Later today, this webcast will be posted to the HBI website at www.hbihotels.com for on-demand viewing, and you can pass that on to uh, your friends in the hotel business. I'd like to welcome... Jeff Higley, Vice President of Digital Media and Communications for HotelNewsNow.com, STR, and STR Global. Jeff has been in journalism for more than 25 years and has specialized in the hotel industry for nearly 15 years. Prior to joining HotelNewsNow.com and Smith Travel Research, Jeff Higley served in various leadership positions for Questex Media Group's Hotel Management Magazine. Higley was instrumental in the company's launch of Hotel Design, Luxury Hotelier, and Hotel Times Magazines. In 2008, Jeff joined Smith Travel Research and launched HotelNewsNow.com, where he oversees all aspects of the HotelNewsNow.com digital platform, including the HotelNewsNow.com website, and daily newsletters. Jeff also leads SDR's corporate public relations efforts and is a speaker at a number of industry events. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to HBI's Marketplace webcast. Charlie, hi. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the introduction. I, I will say that, you know, every time I hear that, uh, the number of years I've been in journalism, I think it's going backwards now. Once you hit that age, you start going backwards. So right, yeah. So i be in journalism for five years, right? It's enough experience already. <laughs> so everything's going well uh, with HBI, and uh, I appreciate the, uh, uh, the invitation to participate here. Um, we're going to get right into the presentation as long as I can figure out where I start here. And I'm not sure. I think you'll just click next slide. Yeah, I'm still going through uh, some slides for the properties. Right. Uh, our HBI office is uh, scrolling through some of our Hotel Brokers International listings. Okay. Uh, so I'll wait for those to go through until I get queued up here. But in the meantime, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're and uh, I, I, uh, speaking of Hotel News Now, I saw uh, today uh, a couple of the articles from your recent hotel data conference. Can you tell us a little bit about that the hotel data conference? Sure, sure. We uh, It was our fourth conference. We've had them all in Nashville. Uh, and I'll tell you, our fifth one is scheduled for September 4th and 5th next year at the Lowe's Vanderbilt in Nashville as well. 
Uh, we had about 350 attendees, uh, uh-huh. paid attendees this year, and with speakers and, and, and whatnot, we are at about capacity for the hotel. So uh, uh, the rooms were, were, were very full for, for all of the uh, breakout sessions, and as you can imagine, we, you know, we were data, data, data. Everything had a data component to it, and, uh, you know, the demographic for that conference is pretty diverse. There are a lot of revenue managers a lot of owners, operators. Uh, we even started having a, um, uh, I'll call it an investor's track this year, although that wasn't the official name for it. We had several panels that were geared toward the investment community. We don't ever want to become an investment conference, but we felt like having th- that element to it was an important uh, part in growing the, uh, the attendees, uh, the number of attendees for the conference uh, down the road. So, you know, we had yeah. a, stock, uh, a stock panel and a transactions panel uh, uh, and, uh, and, and several presentations uh, from STR, from Steve Hennis, who, uh, who works closely with HBI on the uh, on the transaction almanac. So, uh, uh, all in all, it was a great conference, uh, sellout, and uh, and we we couldn't be more thrilled with the results. Cool, yeah. Uh, and speaking of uh, investors, there I saw that article by uh, Steve Hennis about investors are feeling more confident in the, their returns on hotel transactions or the prospects of returns, uh, but yet transaction volume is is down can you it seems like you kind of have to scratch your head on that well you do but i think with the audience that we have for this webinar it's 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 no surprise i mean you know what we're seeing clearly is a, a spread between the bid and the ask that just doesn't compute you know everybody wants a deal that's buying and everybody who's selling wants to maximize their return you know more so than more more now than ever before it seems like so you know i think that's kind of uh, stymieing a number of deals and of course with the uh, uh w- the lack of, of of debt available out there uh still prevalent uh you know that that's also keeping uh, the number of uh of deals to a minimum this year. You know, and you know, the other thing I keep hearing at no matter which conference I'm at is there's still uncertainty over where the economy is going, where the presidential election is heading, and once that gets settled, there could be some comfort level. Either way, you know, whoever wins, at least there's some certainty involved, and that could spur some, you know, debt to be freed up, and it could also spur some, some, uh, you know, buyers. Uh, to become more realistic as well as sellers becoming more realistic in that bid and ask, which could hopefully, uh, uh, you know, obviously benefit uh, HBI's members in a big way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, we're, uh, I think we're seeing transaction volume pick up, uh, but, uh, you know, transactions generally do, they take longer, and and I guess because there is that bid and ask spread um, you know, not as many people are coming to agreement on price, and that's where that's where the experts, uh, the expert brokers, come into play, right? You know, yeah, trying to yeah. convince both of them that hey, you know, uh, there's a reason to come down or there's a reason to go up, uh, and uh, and I think that'll start coming into play a lot more as uh, as that certainty level increases based on, uh, you know, the economic environment. and The broader economic. picture, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, shall we get into your, your data? Absolutely. Let's tee it up here. All right. So, leading off, this is the first slide. This is the number that really everybody should kind of keep in mind, uh, a record July. It's no surprise that July is a record. It tends to happen every year. Uh, but with 106 million rooms sold this July, you know, fueled by a lot of family vacations and whatnot, that was the most rooms ever sold in a single month. And as we go throughout the uh, uh, throughout the presentation, you know, that'll be kind of a common theme because, as I think everybody on this call knows, demand has been really strong throughout the last 18 months, and it's really what's keeping the industry afloat. And we'll show some numbers here that you know, demonstrate that uh, you know, ADR still, while it's starting to show some signs of, of life, is still lagging where a lot of people thought it would be. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we'll look at the next 
slide. Let's see where we're at here. Okay, so there is a pretty good story to tell in the hotel industry. If you look at these key indicators, this data is all through July. Our August numbers will be crunched next week, so July data is the latest that we have available. And as you can see on the far right side, you know, it's a great story for RevPAR. Uh, it's just a tremendous year, uh, you know, with uh, uh, with the 7.3 percent RevPAR growth this year, on top of the 8.2 percent last year. Uh, you know, it still doesn't quite offset where we were uh, when we dropped uh, that what 16.8 percent back in 08. But you know, yeah. we can start seeing some some life here. You know, RevPAR, which has been tr completely driven by the demand. Uh, over the past two years, as you can see, last year's demand was really strong. Uh, this year, pretty good still. Occupancy, pretty good. ADR starting to inch up there, and that's a that that's a good uh, a good thing to see. And of course, over on the far left side of the screen, where you have the supply. Uh, numbers. That's a great number to see, and I think that's even a, a good number for the HBI members to see because there's not a lot of supply coming in. There's not a lot of supply in the pipeline, which means the only way people are going to get into the industry or add to their portfolio is to acquire assets. And and clearly that uh, that's a great uh, a great story for for all of your members to uh, to hear because that's really going to be the way it goes for at least the next 18 months. Yeah. So let's see here. I, okay, I see what it's doing. So back on track here, uh, um, occupancy ADR percent wise, um, you can see where for a long time during this recession, or, or excuse me, this recovery from the recession, uh, ADR percentage growth was below occupancy growth. That's kind of an upside down story for our hotel industry because you know, if you have the occupancy, you would think it would give you the pricing power to raise your rate. That was not happening uh, all the way through. Uh, you know, you can see there in uh, the middle 2011, it started to even out there where the line started crossing, and now it's consistently uh, ADR percentage growth is consistently above occupancy percentage growth, but not by a whole lot. So that uh, that pricing power isn't quite where uh, a lot of hotel operators would like it to be. And from what I've seen, often when ho when uh, hotel rates drop, the leader it comes from the top down, from uh, luxury and upper upscale. They drop their rates. Um, is there any support for that in the data? And do, and do the upper upscale and luxury do they lead the way in in uh, getting rates back up? Yeah, absolutely, and we'll, we, I have some slides a little bit later on that deals with some of the chain scales and location segments uh, that demonstrate that, that perfectly. What we also find is that, yes, it's true, it's top-down, uh, both in rate dropping and recovery, but it tends to be when the recovery comes around that the upper end of the spectrum gets their rate back quicker than the lower end. Um, so that's a dynamic that's, uh, I think, working, uh, you know, working in the industry right now because the economy segment is still, uh, uh, you know, still has a little bit of ways to go. And uh, as I said, we'll have some numbers a little bit later on when we look at the yeah, okay. specific segments. So if you can look here, you know, this kind of uh, uh, is the same, same story as the previous slide. Uh, it shows in blue the ADR growth and, and how that has uh, correlated with the demand growth. And you can see here right at the far right, those are, those are crossing. What, what's a little bit of a concern is, is that that blue line is no longer going up at a, big, you know, at a sharp trajectory. It's right. kind of starting to take that right-hand turn, which might indicate that that growth will flatten out. Now, if it flattens out and we still experience you know, 4 to 5 percent ADR growth every year, I think most hotel owners and operators would take that. Uh, Be okay with that. They sure. would love to see it back up there in the you know in the eight nine percent range, but uh, you know by the looks of this, uh, the trends that are going on, uh, that might be a struggle. We might see some flattening of this going on. Going to take a look at uh, a quick look at, uh, at some of the daily numbers uh, that we've uh, um, that we've seen, and I seem to be missing a 
couple of slides through here. I'm not sure where we're at. I'm going to try to go back and see if it seems like every other slide might be might be missing. I'm not sure if there's some some help. Uh, if there's anybody that can step in and help and see what the yeah, issue we'll might we'll be. check on that. Oops, what did I do there? Oh, I see what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go here. This is the slide I wanted, and it's blank. Okay, so what that slide would show would be uh, a breakdown of the uh, of, of the last few weeks and how the performance has uh, uh, you know has changed over the, those last four or five weeks. Uh -huh. This slide also tells the same story in a little bit of a different uh, um, layout in that. Um, it's the week by week is composed to everything all compressed. So what you can see that week, the last the uh, the last data available uh, was the week of October. Excuse me, August 25th, where you can see a pretty strong ADR percentage growth of 5.3 percent, and occupancy still strong as well. So that's a good indicator. You know, if you look past across the past, uh, you know, what is that six weeks? You can really see, you know, that ADR growth. Mm -hmm percentage staying up there for the most part at 4% or higher. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, that, goes, that goes back to the other chart where things were starting to level off. But, again, I think most people would, uh, would, would, would be okay with a 4% ADR growth week in, week out, uh, you know, because that will add up eventually. Yeah, yeah. As long as it stays ahead of inflation, at least, should be good. That's right, and and I'm and, and Charlie, I, I I'm having some really there's some slides here that are missing, so I'm going to try to do this and go back here. Okay, all right, let's start. Let's go to this one then see where we're coming. So we're going to look at some chain scales as we talked about before. You can see uh, the the entire chain scale. Um, uh, Listing is available on the hotelnewsnow.com website at slash chainscales.pdf. Here's just a sample of who falls into which uh, uh, which chain scale, um, and I'm hoping that yeah we're missing a, a, a slide there. Um, so here, let's look. Uh, nothing. There's nothing bad at, about this slide. You're looking at all the chain scales and uh, the success that uh, that they've experienced July year to date. Again, you know, ADR uh, across the board uh, uh, doing pretty well. That mid scale segment is uh, is struggling a little bit, uh, you know, to get to regain rate. Remember that's year over year. And 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 the previous slide that that we, that we missed was, you know, that that. The upper, excuse me, the mid-scale segment has kind of shown some uh, uh, some softness, in large part because of the tiering program that Best, Best Western put into place, where they have the uh, Best Western Premier and Best Western Plus and Best Western. So that brand kind of got uh, um, spaced out, where in the Premier is in upscale, the Plus is in upper mid-scale, and Best Western. The standard brand is in mid scale, so a lot of the properties in that brand that were achieving higher ADRs, occupancies, rev pars, etc., were shifted to a different segment, which obviously would have an effect on the mid scale segment where they were all bundled into prior to uh, to the company uh, going to that tiering system. Hmm. Yeah. Now, and and would you think mid scale uh, when the dip happened in 2008? Um, 2009, 10. Did Midscale retain its rates any better than uh, since those rates weren't too high to begin with? Yeah, yeah. I think that the, everybody stayed fairly consistent uh, with their drop across the board. Again, like you said earlier, you know, once the once the luxury segment started dropping its rates during the recession, well, the trickle down effect came into play. And, right. Uh, you know, as, as travelers, I, we know this. You know, from a yeah. consumer perspective, it's great because you could trade up. If you're a normal, you know, if you normally stay in a mid-scale property, but all of a sudden you can get an, an upper upscale or even a luxury property for the same price you once got a mid-scale hotel room. Yeah. Most consumers are going to make that trade up while they can to experience. Sure. That. And I'm, I was just thinking that there's a lot more room for rate compression in luxury and upper upscale than in mid scale or economy. So dollars dollar wise anyway, 
um, there's going to be a, a much bigger swing at the upper end of the, the chain scales rather than the, the lower end of the chain scales. That's right. That, that's exactly right. And, and, and uh, you know, I think we'll see some slides coming up. Uh, that doesn't. That also occurs by market, not just by market not just by segment. So right. you know, we'll see we'll see some slides with uh, with some data from some of the markets that, I, that were actually pretty surprising uh, when I saw these during the data conference last week. So we're looking at seven of the 70% of the rooms at the upper end are being sold each night. I mean, you know, I'm not sure there's an operator out there that wouldn't be happy with that, right? Where it all evens out to get to that roughly that 62% nationwide occupancy, obviously, is the lower lower end of the spectrum is struggling a little bit more. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, you know, there, there, it's hard to uh, it's hard to determine what's actually causing that. Is some of it going up? You know, is, is some of it trading up because of the the prices available? Uh, that could certainly well be one of them. The other theory, or one other theory, is is that the people that normally stay at the at the lower end, uh, uh, the economy and mid scale segments, were hit pretty hard by the economy, and their disposable income took a big hit. So, what's the first thing that you know that falls by the wayside? You know, it's the travel. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. so there are a couple theories as to why that occupancy right. uh, is low, and and you know the third one, and I think you know this is one that's always it's kind of like the, the the elephant in the room, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of product at that lower end that uh, you know maybe hasn't been maintained as well as it should have been, and uh, uh, you know so you have some properties down there that are you know 35, 40 percent occupancy that are still making money for their owner because they're bought and paid for. So they can yeah. afford to put, you know, you know, put lower rates and and afford to get lower occupancy because they don't have the mortgage payment. So, uh, so there are many different reasons for it, but yeah, I think it's a good sign for the industry in general that the upper end is as strong as it is occupancy year to date because that trickle down effect will eventually trickle down to the mid scale and economy segment, provided that there's a quote prolonged recovery here. What that means is anybody's guess that could be, you know, the typical cyclical nature of the industry is, you know, seven to eight years. You know, we'll see, uh, we'll see how that, uh, you know, how that shakes out with this, uh, with this recovery. Yeah, and Jeff, I have a, a question from the audience. What are the significant economic metrics that are affecting the hotel industry, uh, and is unemployment still a significant? Bellwether for U.S. hotel performance. Absolutely, unemployment is huge. I mean, you know, if you if you have more un, unemployed unemployed people, you certainly are going to have more. I guess you could say less disposable income for those, uh, uh, you know, for that travel purpose. Uh, and I, I'm calling up a file. We actually addressed this during uh, our data conference last week, and. Randy Smith even went so far as to uh, to, to look at uh, long-term ADR growth as it relates to the GDP. And I'm going to call this file up on my desktop. Um, there we go. That, uh, that you won't be able to see, but I'll try to explain it as, as clear as I can. Uh, you know, the long-term GDP growth, when you take – ADR into uh, in, when you take the CPI change versus actual ADR growth. So we're looking at GDP and the cost of inflation. Mm -hmm. Average rates haven't changed over 25 years. So real ADR oh. adjusted for inflation in 1987, ADR was $52.32. Adjusted for inflation in 2011, ADR was fifty one dollars and seventy nine cents. So huh, it actually wow. fell back a few pennies when you're adjusted for inflation. And Randy's argument was, look, all the things we're putting into our hotel rooms, you know, with the with the technology, with the bedding, with you know the amenities in the bathroom, is it really worth it if we're not raising our rates aggressively enough to even uh, you know combat inflation? So, you know, the overall economic picture is one that, that we, uh, you know, 
we utilize in our in our forecast, which which we'll we'll have some slides about that later on. But uh, we work with Oxford Economics uh, to establish our forecast, and uh, the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the 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 things that affect the uh, the hotel industry are pretty far and wide. And I'm getting to the answer specific answer for this question, right? As soon as I open up this file right here again from our from our data conference last last week. So some of the things that we think affect as soon as this PowerPoint opens, I've got a list here. Um, and here we go right here. Um, so some of the things that are coming up in the in, in the overall economy and political picture, you know, we all we all hear about that financial cliff that we're that we're facing. You know, we're looking at you know payroll the end to a payroll tax holiday uh, at the end of 2012, uh, ex extended unemployment benefits, alternative minimum tax patch. You know, we all know the Bush tax rates and the state tax all expiring at the end of the year. Um, right. You know, plus, when you talk about spending cuts, those are going to really tighten the fiscal picture for the U.S. in general. How that affects the hotel industry, you know, we think that there could be a, a, a minimal effect, but we also think there could be some pent-up demand as corporations and companies are sitting on piles of cash just trying to figure out ways to spend it. There's no place to put their money to make you know, the returns that they're used to over the past 20 years, so everyone's sitting on cash. Is that going to be a benefit to the hotel industry? You know, it certainly could, uh, you know, but, but that's something that, again, once we get past the election, we'll probably see, uh, you, know, the, you know, that'll be a little bit of a better, well, yeah, better yeah. gauge at that point. <laughs> Speaking of the election, there's a question here from the audience. Who... Bought more hotel rooms for their convention, the Democrats or the Republicans? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you collect that data or not, but well, well, we do collect it. Uh, it is being crunched. Um, I'm trying to think if I if there have been any reports that I've seen come across my desk that would indicate those, and I don't think there had. I don't think there are. You know what? Obviously, the problem that we have. You know, in measuring that is this year, obviously with the uh, with the, the tropical storm that turned into a hurricane. Right, the Republicans' attendance might have been curtailed by the threat of the storm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's a really that's a really hard picture to uh, um, uh, you know to paint at this point. And, I, and I'm looking. I don't have any specific data for that at this point. So yeah, I'm sorry, okay, I thanks. Can't specifically answer that. Okay. So going back to the slides here, then we've got uh, um, I'm, this thing is really acting funny, Charlie. I don't know if it's my computer or the deck itself, but I'm going through. Okay, all right. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely missing some some slides. So don't uh, you know the title? There was a slide before this, um, but. I'm, I'm Jeff. I'm actually told that the uh, what the audience is seeing um, is not necessarily what you're seeing in when you're if you skip back and forth. Um, so I'd say just go ahead through your presentation, um, and the slides should match up uh, as you're talking. Okay. Let me go back then to find where we were. Um, okay. So we have the seven out of 10, and what I'm going to do, let's see, and, and, and I hope this works. If, if it doesn't follow along, please tell me, and I will, uh, I will change my strategy here. But I'm going to call up the master yeah. file that I, that I sent and use that. Let me just get 7 of 10. There we go. All right. So what you sh what, what should be seen now uh, is a uh, uh, the upper end ADRs. As you were talking about this a little bit earlier, Charlie, you can see luxury by far 
is uh, is 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 outpacing uh, all the other chain scale segments with um, uh, you know through uh, through through ADR through July. And you can see again we're looking way down at the economy. Uh, segment which is still struggling a little bit, so uh, so it's no surprise at the upper end there's uh, you know that it's driving the recovery that is going on. So you would also expect uh, demand uh, is where you would expect it to be. You know, looking at specific locations, uh, demand in, at, on interstate locations again transient business is kind of driving this recovery. So people are out there driving. So you would expect those interstate hotels to uh, to be strong demand as well as the urban urban centers, which are always a, a strong uh, uh, demand uh, mm -hmm. performer. Um, let me get here. Let's see. Right. We're also going to see here where uh, resorts are showing the most ADR growth. Uh, you know, they again, they kind of fell the farthest during the downturn, especially as we went through that whole government. Uh, uh, what's the right word here that that would be diplomatically correct? The, well, the, uh, there was the AIG effect, as it was called. That's right, AIG effect, and then all the other subsequent things of you know with the, the, that the, that that came came about with the scandal with the GSA. So you know, resorts fell hard. There was a time when, if you guys will all recall, there were there were resorts actually changing their name to not have resorts in them, so that they could get corporate yeah. business to come because corporate America was afraid to go to a resort because a newspaper would be standing, a newspaper reporter would be standing out front, going, "Oh, yeah. yes, they're spending money ridiculously." So that yeah. was a, a big challenge for uh, for the resorts. But it's nice to see, uh, you know, even with an occupancy percentage that's uh, you know right in the middling range there. Uh, their resorts are able to push uh, push ADR uh, a little more aggressively than uh, than the other uh, locations are. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we have, but urban properties, no surprise, are the ones taking in the most cash. Their room revenue, they're able to get the ancillary uh, income from parking. Uh, excuse me, you know, driving these driving people in and hi and charging higher rates. Uh, to uh, uh, you know, to build that uh, that room revenue up, and of course the the rev power that comes with it. You know, the good thing is here in this slide is you know just looking at that rev power, the blue bar, where you see uh, you know four of the, the the location segments are all north of seven percent on the uh, on rev power growth. So you can see uh, that's uh, uh, that's encouraging. But I think the, the 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 hidden story here is where you're looking at airport uh, rev par not as strong because this recovery is so transient driven. Corporate America has gotten out, but not in droves. So I think some of the airport properties are suffering from that. Uh, and, and, yeah. you know, and anecdotally, we also we we hear that those secondary and tertiary markets, those small metro markets, are kind of have always have felt the pinch and really haven't been able to uh, to drive. Um, uh, you know, drive their rates and 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 rev par strong. Yeah, yeah. So it's also no surprise where ADR is highest. Uh, you know, you're looking at urban and, and resort with actual average daily rates. You know, in the getting close to $150, and then all of the rest are are less than 100. So you can see where the the you know where that demand. Who's been able to capture that demand and then turn it into uh, into ADR uh, increases? Okay. Next, we'll take a look at some of uh, some of the markets and and the slide here is is an interesting one. It just came. Uh, uh, we, we we get a lot of questions. You know, we hear a lot about the top 25, but we don't hear a lot about. Uh, you know those the, the the markets below that. So I thought it'd be interesting to just just look to see some of the markets that fall where they fall in terms of size, determined by the number of guest rooms. Now, one thing you will notice is that Las Vegas is not on this list, and we do not report Las Vegas numbers because of the uh, um, you know the casino industry and 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 how that is skewed. It would completely skew 
the entire uh, data set by including all those comp rooms. So Randy, oh, right, right. a long time ago, decided that, you know what, Vegas is a beast in, in and of itself, and it's best to be, uh, uh, you know, dealt with uh, on its own. But, you know, there's just some interesting, uh, uh, if you look through here, there's some interesting uh, uh sizes of, of, of hotel markets. You know, for instance, I, I thought Memphis would be a little bit bigger than what it is, but there it is down at, uh, what is that, like number 47. Um, so just kind of looking through there, it's just kind of an interesting chart that uh, I would like to, uh, that I thought would be good to include here. Yeah. As we go into the top 25, you know, looking at the, in, in the next series of slides, you'll see the red line, the red bar is always the U.S average or the total U.S., and then you see these individual markets, uh, occupancy percent change. Uh, Houston, Nashville leading the way. Houston, obviously, you know, I think it can be attributed to uh, uh, gas and oil boom. Uh, Nashville can be attributed to the reopening of the, uh, uh, of the Opryland, the Gaylord Opryland. And then, of course, you go down through the line there, uh, uh, you know, the, I think scary part for a lot of people is looking way over to the left. Phoenix is still a struggling market in terms of right, yeah. returning. And, you know, again, it's <laughs> here we go. There's a lot of resorts there, right? So that, that while it has been – the resorts have been able to raise their rate, it's still a struggle for them because they had such a long, uh, long way to, uh, to come. Uh, so the next slide, then, is uh, a look at uh, ADR percent change. And you can see there, uh, you know, San Francisco, very robust, almost 12%. Oahu, New Orleans, you know, you can look at some of those, you know, the bigger cities are, are driving, uh, driving that, um, bigger gateway cities are driving that recovery. And there again, in the red bar is the, uh, the U.S. recovery. And, of course, that then leads us into the ADR percent change. Um, you know, again, it's no surprise that uh, that, that Oahu and, and and San Francisco are able to uh, 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 lead the way in RevPAR change, excuse me, in, in, in RevPAR percent growth, given that they were also the leaders in ADR. So it's a, it's a good sign yeah. for uh, for those again those gateways. And do you think cities. that those gateway cities uh, is it largely international travel from uh, that's uh, driving that? Well, that's certainly one of the elements that's driving that, but the, but those are also centers of corporate commerce too. So there's a lot of of, of headquarter corporate type business that are going to those markets. But but absolutely international travel. While we do not track, you know, that number of inbound travelers internationally, you know, anecdotally we know that that is certainly playing a, a role in these gateway cities and their uh, and their performances. Uh, next slide is the uh, is the actual uh, occupancy percent, and uh, this is the whole number. The so you can see Oahu again, New York, always a strong market uh, occupancy wise. I won't read all of these, but uh, but the good news is if you look at this the red bar here, the majority of these markets are on the the right side. So. Um, I might be off a little bit on this number, but I'm pretty close, I think. Uh, you know, uh, the top 25 represents, you know, let's say 25% of the industry's inventory, but 33% of its revenue. So to see those kinds of occupancy, uh, uh, excuse me, yeah, occupancy rates in the top 25 markets is a very positive sign for, for the industry. Uh, we can also look here, same thing with the with ADR. Uh, you can look at uh, the runaway winner is New York. Um, but again, you know, we're looking at, you know, it's a little bit more balanced with people above the national average and below the national average. But uh, but to see some of them, uh, uh, you know, up over $150 is is a good sign for yeah, those yeah. markets, undoubtedly. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the uh, you know in, in the sequence the rev par and no shock, New York leads the way there. Oahu again, we're looking at you know the, the, those gateway cities on the right side. Those are all the ones that, that lead the way, uh, and that you would expect to lead the way. Those international travelers come to those cities. Uh, by and large, they tend to be port cities of some port of excuse me port cities of some sort. 
Uh, yeah. uh, and of course, Oahu, you know, being what it is, uh, uh, you know, just attracting those travelers not only from the U.S. but from Asia as well, able yeah. to drive yeah. that uh, drive that rev farm. So we always get asked, uh, you know, well, where are we in the point of recovery? Uh, so here's a select number of cities and how much their ADRs have recovered since, uh, you know, since hitting the bottom in 2008. And, again, you can see New York City, San Francisco leading the way over there, Boston, New Orleans, all having strong performance. It's the next slide that just kind of totally throws – I guess blows my mind because you think New York is such a strong market, but it's still $34 away from its peak in 2007. So it's regained. Did I? Oops. Did I press a, sl a slide there too quick? Um, it's regained $34 since the since the trough in 2008, but it's still that's only halfway to where it dropped from its peak in 2007. So even a strong market like New York, while it's been able to drive Average daily rates pretty uh, uh, pretty con convincingly. Mm -hmm. It's still got a long way to go to get back to peak numbers. Yeah. You know, just oh. anecdotally, I've heard Mark Woodworth from PKF speak a couple of times in the last few months, and he's got this uh, series of slides that plot recoveries and how long it takes to get back, and then he projected out. Uh, and his latest slide at, at the data conference last week showed that that we should get back to peak numbers somewhere in the third quarter of 2015. So, hmm. what's that? Three years away yet? Yeah. Uh, we that, now th that, that's PKF numbers. We don't we don't have that. But but I just find that fascinating. That uh, uh, you know, all in, it'll be like a nine year recovery to get back to peak. Wow. Yeah. Which I think is, uh, you know, I think that catches everybody kind of saying, holy cow. <laughs> we yeah, yeah. Like three years to go, really two thirds of the way through. That's kind of scary. Uh, so next we'll and look it's, at the it's, thing. And, and we were talking about uh, unemployment matching uh, or tracking along with the hotel industry uh, or how much the hotel industry is dependent on employment. And it, considering how stubborn the unemployment rate's been, in this recovery, uh, that uh, it seems to at least anecdotally be uh, correlating with the slow recovery of RevPAR for the industry. That's right. I think as long as you know, if, if we stay at eight percent unemployment or, or above eight percent unemployment for any more extended period of time, then yeah, I think you know, even that, even Mark Woodworth's. Uh, uh, Forecast might be a little bit uh, you know, rosy, rosy. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you know because that, that there's definitely now again it depends on who wins the election if uh, you know if if you know if there's a change in administration and and or or it stays the same and there's somehow a uh, uh, you know a flurry of of hiring because of that certainty you know that could help us dramatically in the industry uh, start 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 closing that gap a little sooner. So you can see here that, uh, you know, we, we've talked about the transient uh, being the driver of this recovery, and this this chart shows it all. I mean, if you look at transient demand has outpaced 2007, which was, you know, prior peak year that everybody points to. Last year was strong. This year is even stronger than 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 last year. And I think a lot of it just points to I, and and if you're if everybody on this call is honest with themselves, how many of you feel like your vacation is a God-given right that you've got to take and you're going to take it come right. hell or high water. You know, and yeah. I think that's the way most Americans feel. There's going to be some way shape or form we're going to go, we're going to get away from it. And uh, and I think this this chart kind of uh, sums that up uh, uh, pretty so is is transient leisure or uh, what's the relationship between yeah. transient and leisure? Well, transient is is both leisure and some business travel, but it's the leisure component of that transient that has uh, that that is driving it. Uh, uh, tr how we divide it is transient versus group. So, you know, you've got yeah. your individual guy out on the road right, that right. falls into transient business. Uh, if you're part of a big group, 
bookings and then that falls into the bookings. But by yeah. and large, it's the uh, leisure traveler that is driving the recovery uh, transient-wise. Hmm. Yeah. You so, think it would be corporate, but it's not. Yeah, and there is corporate out there. Uh, don't uh, don't discount that. But I still I, I think the general overall feeling is is that a lot of that corporate has been pulled back in the last 12 months because of the theme that I'm going through here is you know there's so much uncertainty. Yeah. Not, yeah. You know, corporations are looking at it like going you know I'm not going to have somebody out on the road when we're not sure what the landscape's going to be like in 2013. Because we don't know if, you know, if the current administration gets reelected, okay, there's a certainty. We kind of know the direction they're going. If, uh, you know, if, if the challenger comes in and wins and changes everything, you know, how is that going to affect me as a corporation? And that's when I can turn my, uh, my, my people loose to travel. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, because of the per especially being perceived that, you know, the challenger is a pro business man kind right. of a. Uh, right. Can you tell how politically correct I'm trying to be? <laughs> I'm not trying to come down on one yeah, yeah. or the other. Um, so, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see. I think the election, you know, in general, it may not even be the presidential election that has a major impact. It might be, uh, uh, you know, the, the Senate and, and Congress. The, the whole. Right. Who wins that? And you know, can we get a budget passed? There's some certainty yeah. for us. How about that? That would be a novel concept. They Amen. Have a, a, yeah, that would be great. Pass that would allow us to uh, to plan uh, accordingly going forward. So you can still see. I'm going I'm to switch back back for just one minute. You know, you can see uh, uh, the, uh, the the transient demand breaking records. But then when we look to the next slide, ADR is still behind. Remember, we talked about the yellow line being peak and how. In the demand sequence, the blue line and the red line were above yellow, but you know, ADR yeah. hasn't been able to uh, to, to maintain that. Uh, so we're looking then. We turn to uh, you know the group uh, sales pitch. Sale, group sales is actually on pace, right, with 2007. And you can see in June huh. we had a huge yeah. bump where group business uh, uh, exceeded, exceeded. Yeah. the huh. peak numbers. Okay, so. Good news, right? We we think everything is uh, is looking uh, rosy there, but whoops, I went one ahead. Sorry about that. Group ADRs are still depressed. You know, we're looking at the orange line, which is 2008. Uh, so we've got 2012, 2011, still below ADRs. So yeah, yeah. you can see there's a theme throughout this whole discussion that you know, and it's no shock to anybody that's listening in. You know, ADRs, hotels have struggled to raise their ADRs. It's, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's that simple. So the last sl slide in the sequence kind of shows both of them on the same uh, same chart where you're looking at transient and group uh, uh, monthly ADR. Um, in general, it's healthy for there to be a gap between transient and group uh, with transient leading the way. So in that regard, it is very healthy, but what concerns us a little bit is after we saw that bump there, uh, you know, with demand, ADR is starting to fall in that uh, group monthly, uh, in the group business, which is a little bit of a concern. Um, you know, and, and anecdotally, you know, what, what, what I hear from a lot of people that are that are doing their corporate rate negotiations now mm -hmm. is, is that companies are coming to them and saying, oh, no. I want 6% less. I'm not even talking flat. I want less. Yeah. Whereas huh. all the other, where the hotels are saying, well, wait a minute, we haven't increased in four years. I think we want a 6% bump. So, you know, there's going to be uh, an interesting dynamic coming out of coming out of that uh, scenario. Now, and, and is this the number, uh, the ADR, is that taken from uh, the date of occupancy or the date of booking? This is all date of occupancy. Okay. We don't do date of book. We don't do booking. We do strictly room sold, so demand occupancy. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's move to the next uh, slide. We're going to look just real quickly at some operating numbers, and you can see we you, we do a an annual survey. Of our, we call it our host study, which uh, this year I think was about seven thousand hotels participated. Uh, therefore, we we come up with an estimated total revenue and profitability. So last year, you can see the estimated revenue in the industry was one hundred fifty three. Point three billion, uh, and uh, you know the net income was thirty two point eight, and the percentage there is the yellow line that goes across. I, I find that to be twenty one point four. Uh, looks like right now, huh? Yeah, twenty one point four percent in in eleven. Uh, these are the, the, this uh, this study, which is uh, published in June, looks at the previous complete year. We're trying to get it so that we can maybe update this quarterly. Uh, stay tuned for that. There's nothing etched in stone yet, but we think that's something that we would love to uh, uh, love to go down the road of. And then the second the second is uh, is the total the, the percentage change of, of revenue and, and profitability. And you can see uh, you know the the net income uh, is uh, percentage wise is increasing over the uh, the, the total uh, total revenue. Which you know is uh, uh, I think shows that hotels are becoming a lot more efficient in what they're offering. You know, a lot of the fat has been trimmed. They're offering, in some cases, bare bones amenities and services. So you get uh, you know obviously that that net income uh, gets to be a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah. At least it's uh, trended up since 2009. That's right. That, that's a good. That is a good sign. So we're going to look at uh, uh, some transactions numbers here. Thank you for partnering us with us, HBI. You guys have been uh, a good partner since we've uh, uh, we formed a relationship earlier this year. We launched our uh, the transactions almanac uh, with a lot of this data in it. So we'll get right to that. You can see the val transaction volume. Charlie, we talked about this. Uh, you know, the, on the far right, the year to date is in red, and then what we think we project kind of what's going to be the rest of the year. Um, Far less than last year, but remember last year the first half was driven so, so much by the REITs buying all those properties because they were flush with cash. That kind of uh, petered out the second half of the year and has kind of gone into 2012 uh, at the same pace as it ended 2011. Uh, the okay. next chart will be the average price per room. Uh, as you can see, the good news is is that even – you know, even though there have been a far fewer number of transactions, the cost per room has, has roughly stayed the same, maybe increased slightly uh, in the transactions in our database from last year. So that uh, that is definitely, I'm sure, music to uh, to your members' ears. Uh, looking at the average cap rate on trailing 12 NOI, uh, you can see it at year to date is at 9.3. Uh, which is pretty consistent with what I'm hearing out at all the various conferences. Uh, so, uh, so I feel like uh, you know we're, we're dead on there. Uh, yeah, I think what I mean we, we're seeing, HBI is seeing a, a, a fair a wide variance depending on the quality of the asset and location. That's a, that's a, uh, that's, a, that's a good way, definitely a good way to summarize that. But 9.3 uh, average sounds sounds right. So then we looked at we're looking at some of the active transactions markets. Um, the volume I won't re uh, read through all of this. You know the room revenue multiplier there on the right hand side is something that Steve Hennis is is, is starting to uh, really um, uh, put in the forefront. So uh, for those that don't know, I'm sure everybody does, but it's the price divided by the room revenue. Um, so you can see uh, uh, the higher the better. Uh, and uh, New York is doing pretty pretty well in that regard. Yeah, surprising. Even Nashville was uh, 3.85. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next slide is uh, the transactions by uh, location. Uh, we've got you know urban. Uh, same same situation. You can see. I won't read all of these, but you can see uh, clearly. No surprise. Urban average. You know, cost per key or price per key, you know, far outweighs all of the others. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a nice, uh, a nice look there. And the final slide in that series is uh, is, is a look at the by by chain scale. Um, so you can see what 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 
I guess I, I shouldn't be surprised by this, but, uh, you know, the number that, of economy hotels that have changed hands is, uh, oops, is, uh, is a little surprising to me. I thought it would be, uh, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, I thought it would be a little bit less than that, actually. So that's a good sign. Uh, Uh-oh, what do we got going on here? Maybe I have happy fingers. Okay, let's get to that one. Whoops, I jumped way ahead. I'm all over the map. No, I'm actually right on. Okay. So we'll take a quick look at our forecast. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as you can see here, um, these are these were just released last week uh, at the data conference. Um, you know, I think the uh, uh, RevPAR, you know, for this year we think is going to come in at 6.5, slightly lower next year. And a big reason for that and a big reason for some of these numbers you know, are the year-over-year -year comps are getting a lot more difficult now because we had such a strong second half of 2011 performance-wise that to repeat that again in 2012 would be quite difficult. Uh, this you notice any uh, – we've talked about the elections. you notice any – uh, patterns relative to election years versus other years? Oh, my goodness. You know, we don't do that. Um, uh, we, we don't track that. Uh, but I, if you have a chance to see Mark Woodworth speak from PKF, speak before um, the election, do, do it. He gave a presentation at the data conference that included a couple of slides that, that were remarkable. Uh, and let me – I've got that – I hope I have that last slide. He added them late. Uh, please be there. And unfortunately, they're not, of course. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, I can't really answer that, Charlie. But yeah. if, okay. if anybody does have a chance to listen to Mark, make it a point because it's very interesting. On He looks back, I think, all the way back to 1932 and has huh. some fascinating uh, – um, yeah, just some fascinating looks at things. Uh, yeah. So, you know, with that, you know, you can look at, uh, you can see these, uh, uh, this slide here, you know, just kind of summarizing how our, our forecast stacks up with PKF and with, uh, with PWCs. Uh, they were all presented at the, at the conference last week. Uh, and then the, uh, the next slide. Um, see, so it looks like now when you say supply, that's when they open? That is in uh, yes, that's a supply pipeline that opens. Uh, that that is that is in the active pipeline. I'm sorry. Yes. So looking at supply, the active pipeline that uh, as a percentage of the yeah. um, the rooms open. Go, okay. Increasing next year, but still at 0.9 percent. So. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, let's see. Okay, so outlook is uh, is for chain scales is very positive. You can see, you know, again, occupancy growth, ADR growth, and RevPAR growth. And, you know, you look at that top line, luxury, 8% growth there. Again, that can only be good for the industry to have the upper end uh, have such robust growth. Um, but it all kind of, when you take everything into consideration, where you know, where how many hotels and hotel rooms are in luxury versus an economy, you know, kind of evens out to get to about a 6.5% uh, rev par growth for, uh, you know, for 2012 this year. Okay. And then just looking at a quick forecast of some of the, the markets and where we think they're going to end up this year rev par. Uh, San Francisco, Houston, and Oahu definitely leading the way uh, in double digits. And I won't read all of those. You can see them, but it's a – uh, a pretty good story to tell to see that many in positive. When we did this chart three years ago, everybody was to the far left. Some were even off the page on the far left. It was so bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, so looking at uh, – there we go. Uh, looking at 2013, you know, again, it's nice to see everybody kind of in that positive territory without any laggards there in the top 25 markets. Last slide. 
uh, of the day is, uh, you know, we were talking about that recovery and how things get to uh, how, how far we're behind from peak. You can see the yellow line is if ADR would have increased by the rate of inflation every year. Theoretically, this year we should be at 112.91, so let's call it 113, and we're only at 106 and some change. Next year we close the gap a little bit to be about four bucks, but that's still a dramatic, uh, a dramatic difference that we have to make up for. Uh, yeah. So, just everybody for a minute, just look at that in the middle of that chart where that yellow and green bar meet there in 2008. Remember those good old days? <laughs> they're not going to be here for a while still. Although yeah. it's going to get better, there's still some challenges for the industry, and uh, and clearly, uh, you know, having that. Uh, Pricing power to raise rates is, uh, you know, probably at the top of the list. Yeah. So I think that does it. Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate that. Uh, it's great to s see the latest data on the hotel industry. Always I'd like to, to do it. Good. Yeah, thanks. We're always uh, – it's always a pleasure to have you present – with Travel Research and Hotel News Now's data and latest info. I'd like to remind everybody not to forget to rate today's webcast by clicking on Rate, which is found on the gray bar located at the top of the webcast player. Someone asked a question. You can download a PDF list of today's featured hotel listings plus uh, a selection of additional hotel investment assets listed by HBI brokers under the attachments button of on the top of the webcast player um, and also the one PDF is uh, has all of Jeff Higley's slides so if someone had asked where they can get those and you can get them right there as a reminder this and previous hotel investor marketplace webcasts are available for on demand viewing online at hbihotels.com hbi brokers look forward to seeing you in the marketplace and if you have opportunity to visit with hbi brokers at industry conferences and trade shows we will be at the hotel investment conference in europe being held next week september 20th and 21st also at the lodging conference in phoenix October 2nd to 5th, the Best Western Conference in Las Vegas, October 11 to 13, and the Intercontinental Hotel Group Conference and Trade Show being held in Orlando, October 24th and 26th. And that is all for today's webcast. Thank you.